Good morning. Welcome to University of Maryland Baltimore County Television. Today we're here with Brian Fry from the Department of Information Systems Human Centered Computing Program. Brian is a PhD student in the department with the HCC program. Brian, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. While I was an affiliated researcher at Georgia Tech, I uh, developed with a with a quite a talented team, uh, Braille Touch, which is a, uh, um, a touch screen uh, input for the visually impaired uh, that uh, basically mimics uh, how a Braille keyboard uh, works, um, except using the uh, the limitations of a of an iPhone space, and so uh, basically the uh, the uh, the contribution, if you will is that it replaces um, a device that will cost ten, eh, probably ten thousand dollars, maybe uh, maybe as little as six thousand dollars, with an iPad, iPod, or an iPhone and a uh, ten dollar app. And how, where did the idea for this come about? I was um, I was actually watching a uh, presentation um, of something called No Look Notes which uh, had subdivided the screen and used a drop-down menu. Because basically, I mean, the, the, the long story short is, is that, uh, you know, this, this is hard enough for people to use that can see. You can imagine trying to use this if you're visually impaired. And so, you know, as you try to hunt around and get feedback, they were talking about that uh, in No Look Notes, that the, um, the text input rate was around two thirds of a word per minute, and uh, No Look Notes improved on this. They actually doubled it to one and a half words per minute. And I, I you know, listened to the presentation and I thought about it, and I said, well, if you can get, you know, multiple touches on this device, well, that, you know, that's like a Braille cell. And I turned it around because this felt awkward and this kind of feels awkward, and so I ended up rotating it using the same finger mapping um, for the, uh, for the uh, Braille input devices like the Perkins Brailler. And um, we've actually ended up with speeds closer to 30 words per minute. And how does, how does the user experience this? Um, let me do a quick demo. I can show you. Um, this is a reversed Braille cell. It is correct if you're looking at it from the back of the phone. And one of the original ideas was that a, a visually impaired person is going to be able to imagine uh, this concept we call through the device much easier. And so they use the same finger mapping. And let's see, let me just a, B, a. Let me get that out of the way. And this allows um, text input, it allows emailing, it allows uh, chatting. So basically all the, all the basic communication that you would do through the iPhone is, can be done. Yeah, this replaces the keyboard. And mm -hmm. so unlike um, Surrey, which has issues with um, accents and noise in the area and privacy, um, you can turn off the, uh, the audio feedback. This allows someone to just quietly, you know, slip it under the desk and just type away like they need to and unobtrusively know, take notes. Um, and this has been in collaboration with some other institutions, correct? Correct, correct. This was originally developed when I was an affiliated researcher at Georgia Tech and I worked with uh, Gregory A. Baud, Mario Romero, and Caleb Southern. Um, Mario has since graduated and moved on to uh, the Royal University in Helsinki, I believe. And Caleb is getting ready to wrap up his um, PhD at Georgia Tech. And then, Great. And have you had a chance to demo this at conferences or? or in we actually audience? initially presented it at uh, an HCI conference in uh, Orlando in 2011. And it went on to win Best Design at Mobile HCI in Helsinki. I think that's why Mario got the job. Mm -hmm. And um, we just presented at our big conference, CHI, 
uh, a work in progress uh, exploring initially how this can be used um, as a, an aid to teach children Braille. Because as we found out later, when I'm reading Braille, it's one shape. And when you're typing Braille, it's a different shape. Now, we all have the advantage of having our letters and numbers look exactly the same when we write them. And so this uh, concept of a split cell has anecdotally been a problem in teaching children how to read Braille. This way, it reads and writes in the exact same shape. And, and where have you... Um... Sorry, and, and there are, some, are there some papers associated with, with yes, this? Yes, each of those conferences was a paper. Um, okay. There was a two full papers and a, a work in progress, which is a six-page paper. Okay. And this will uh, eventually be available in the App Store, correct? Uh, in theory, um, they've gone on, my colleagues have gone on to form a company called Braille Tech, and uh, we're hoping to get it in the App Store by Christmas. Now, it, it may slip to uh, January or February, but uh, this is about to be real. And what do you anticipate the cost in the App Store will be? Oh, we're still hotly debating it, but one of the initial sticking points was that the original version where you just input text and it's just a teaching device would be free. Okay. And um, do you have, in, in addition to or, uh, the uh, release, the App Store release, do you have any other future plans for this application? Or where would you take this from here if you had the opportunity? Um, Realistically, I think a longit longitudinal study in a school district where we were able to show that, yes, children did indeed learn Braille better uh, with this device would most likely be the next logical step. And anything else that, that you, you would want the audience to know about uh, your project at this point? When I started this process, I... I really knew nothing about it, and I do not consider myself a coder or a, or a hacker or anything. And using this very open SD, Apple SDK, I, I made something real, and and I think it's really helping people. And I think anyone else can do the same thing if they want to. Okay, great, Brian. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, for those of you who are interested in getting more information about this product. Um, you will soon be able to go to the Information Systems Department website and uh, you'll have uh, quick access to uh, papers and if there are any posters or other screenshots, we'll make that available via the website. So thank you everybody and uh, we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.